JC Tickets provides first class trips to Ravens Road Games, including airfare, four star hotels, game tickets, and cocktail parties. We also help provide great seating locations to all Ravens home games. JC Tickets, where the games begin. Visit us at jctickets.net. Ravens Wrap is sponsored by Bud Light, JCTickets.net, Geico Insurance, Dunaway Furniture, Ocean City Golf Club, RussellStreetReport.com, Comfort Inn Gold Coast, Holiday Inn Express, The Original Green Turtle, hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. Welcome back in. It is the original Green Turtles Ravens Rap Show right here on Comcast Beach TV and Delmarva's Rock Radio 93.5 The Beach. Don't forget our radio show 11 a.m. every Sunday at 93.5 The Beach WZBH Rocks. Dot com. So in case you can't make it down to the show Wednesdays at 7, you can always catch it on the radio. But we really would love you to be here. We invite all Ravens fans across Delmarva, and we've got chances for you to win tickets to see Ravens home games thanks to our friends at jctickets.net. So come on down. We give you some tickets. You can put them in the bin. You can put all four in one game. You can spread them out evenly among uh, the various games we're giving tickets away to. So come on down. We would love to see you down here at the Blue Ox Bar and Grill, 7 o'clock Wednesdays here in Ocean City. Hey, what to let you know we've got some news we're, we're going more in the social media route as well or we're getting into the social media route i should say check us out okay we've got a facebook page go to the either original green turtles or the blocks facebook page for the link and uh, you'll link up to uh, our ravens rap show on facebook also we've got a ravens rap website coming soon so we'll give you details on that once that breaks and speaking of details and breaking news folks october the 16th is the day that Ravens owner Steve Bishotti will be joining us here at the Blue Ox. So you'll want to be especially be down here for that one. A round of applause for, uh, for that. We're looking forward to that. Absolutely. Going to be a really good time. Well, we're recapping the 23-20 loss to the Buffalo Bills. Mike Bradley, Steve Slaza, Bobby Vermillion, and special guest Tom Moore from RussellStreetReport.com. And guys, uh, a lot of good conversation uh, off the air. We'll get back on the air with it here concerning, uh, we'll, we'll again uh, start with the, uh, with the offense. We talked about the pressure that Joe Flacco faced, and, and Tom, I think you're absolutely right. Obviously, he's the kind of guy that needs a little bit more time, not as good as maybe some other quarterbacks, although I do think he's done a better job moving around in the pocket. But one of the issues, though, certainly the less time you have at quarterback, not only is that tough on you, but that's less time for the routes to evolve among the wide receivers. That certainly presents an issue as well. So we can condemn the receivers to a point, given the fact they played against a very banged up Buffalo secondary. But we also don't know in some of the cases if the routes were allowed to evolve. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're dealing with press coverage, it's one of those things where you're either going to beat the guy that you're facing or you're not. And when the Ravens have had trouble, such as when they played Tennessee, they laid an egg against Tennessee, they laid an egg against Jacksonville. These are teams that played press coverage. And the Ravens have had trouble with that on the road. Mm -hmm. But especially with Buffalo, this is a team where they had come out, they had a huge win over Houston, and had, according to John Harbaugh, a good week in practice, just simply could not get it done. Yeah, it, it, it didn't translate to, to the field at all. And again, let's go back to the running game, guys. Nine rushes. That's the least in Ravens franchise history. Look, again, I know the Ravens weren't able to run the ball. And look, I'm a big passing guy myself. But even if you're only getting a yard or two yards, at least initially the beginning of that second half, just to keep them honest, just to keep them honest, to me, you got to keep running the ball a little bit there. But I almost wonder if John Harbaugh was almost at that point saying, I want to send a message to the offensive line, almost indicting them, saying, hey, if we're only going to get a yard of rush, we're just as good throwing swing passes or what have you, although we didn't really see that. We didn't see Ray Rice in the flat. We didn't see him utilize the way that Darren Sproles was on Monday night with the Saints and the, uh, the Dolphins, that's for sure. Well, that's the problem I had. It's, you know, it's one thing to not give him the ball headed off, but, you know, why not swing pass at him? You know, why not run him out as a wide receiver, which they do, which there's not a linebacker in the NFL that can cover him, you know, as a wide receiver. You know, we just didn't do anything to counter their blitzes. You know, when I first looked at it, you could see what Harbaugh was saying because there were receivers open, you know, because they were blitzing everybody. But we didn't do anything to counter the measures that they were giving to us. 
Well, I think the other big factor in the game was penalties. You know, uh, Marshall Yanda, I didn't think he had a good game at all either. And he had two false starts and then one key holding call. Uh, I think they ran the ball on first down. I think Ray Rice was, was one of the best runs he had of the day. I think he got seven yards. Then on the next yeah. play, it's first and 20. And then he throws the pass to Ed Dixon in the middle. It goes off Dixon's hands. Another ball that he should have caught intercepted. So, you know, you go from second and three or second and four to first and 20. You try to throw the ball. Not a great throw, a little high. Again, maybe a little pressure. Got rid of it a little quick. A ball, Dixon, or we know a ball that Dennis Pitta probably would have snatched and caught and put away. Goes off Dixon's hands. Interception changed. I think that was really the key play. But you can talk about Dixon's drop, but it was also the holding call by, by Yanda that hurt us in that situation. And then even on the first drive, we get, you know, the, we get the opening kickoff. We had uh, the first play of the game. Uh, I think it was uh, Osemele. It was Osemele. Goes, uh, you know, face masking yeah. call. We're back. Yeah. Then the next play, Yanda gets a... Uh, Ray, Ray, Ray Rice, actually. Yeah, so, so we've that. got two penalties back-to-back -back there. So when you, when you play on the road, we talk about getting off to a fast start. They certainly didn't do that. Penalties hurt them, you know, and the way they played. So I think, I think it was just an egg. They just laid an egg in, in Buffalo this week. Here's the other problem with it. Let's go back to Ed Dixon. This is a guy who, as John Harbaugh told the press, yeah. he's not playing like he did in 2011. It is high school level, folks, to be able to catch the ball. It's one thing if you're being beaten. It's one thing if the other guy's just more physical than you are. But Ed Dixon is having the ball right in front of his hands in decent passes to great passes at times, and he's simply not catching it. I think, frankly, you give Ed Dixon this week in practice, and you see how he does Sunday, and if he doesn't show up Sunday, I don't think he's a Raven any longer. It's funny, John Harbaugh was asked at the press conference on Monday about him, and he he um, he, he kind of got his dander up about him and said, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. You catch the ball and run with it. That's what Ed needs to do, and if he's thinking about anything else, uh, that, then, he, then he shouldn't be. Almost as if maybe Ed's overthinking things and, and just not getting the job done, but you're right. I know a lot of people talk about Matt Furstenberg, but if Furstenberg was ready, then he'd be up here, or maybe they are trying to give Dixon one or two final chances maybe they just don't have a great alternative Dallas Clark uh, is, is the other guy still getting immersed and I think he's he's all right he's certainly catching the ball um, but uh, you know that's uh, just not a lot of great options there for uh, for the Ravens you know the other thing guys I was talking off air about and I want to do I do want to get to the defense here in a second is this is a Buffalo Bills team that yeah granted the secondary was beat up and yeah their defense was giving up 155 yards on the ground so there were two weaknesses there coming to the game that said though this is a team that does have talent mario williams can get after the passer marcel darius is a, a third year or three year third year guy out of alabama he's adept at getting after the passer average five and a half sacks the last two years uh it's an offensive line for buffalo that's very good cj spiller fred jackson are good backs you know, you've got uh, at least uh, Stevie Johnson, a pretty good receiver there, a good guy they got uh, out of uh, Florida State as a complimentary receiver. They have some talent on this team is what I'm trying and to get EJ at. And E.J. Manuel played well. Right, E.J. Manuel, up, up until the Jets game, had played the first couple games well. They should have beaten the or should have beaten the Patriots. They handled Carolina at home. And if not for all those injuries, they maybe beat the Jets at uh, or on the road. Steve, that could have been a 2 one team as well heading into that game. So I think it's a little bit better opponent, too, than we maybe gave him credit for. I knew all that, too, and I kept saying, you know, you can't overlook him, can't overlook him. But in the back of my mind, I was saying, yeah, but it's the Bills. You know, they've been <laughs> terrible for the past 10 years. And you can say what you want. All the players said the right things, but you know that in the back of their mind, they were thinking, it's the Bills. They can't possibly beat us. And they, we turned it on, and we put it down to the wire. But the reality was they were good, and they were good enough to, to win. But they gave us the opportunity, you know. When they, when they ran the trick play and Graham was there, and, you know, I'm screaming. You guys probably could have heard me screaming, you know, from my house. I mean, we had the bumble right there. You know, same thing, Torrey Smith. We would have given his legs up. But, you know, that's why the NFL is such a great game. I mean, it's parody. We have everybody even right now. So it was fun. Well, when you look at the stats and you look at turning the ball over five times on the road and the way they dominated the line of scrimmage, it's hard to believe believe the Ravens were in that game and I think that speaks a little bit as you talked about earlier to the defense you know the defense that whole bend and, and, and don't break and I think they did that pretty well on Sunday although in the second in the second half when the Ravens scored and got it close that one drive that they gave up and they, they were they let they let Buffalo score the touchdown I think that hurt them and uh, but the Ravens played you know th their defense as you said they, they have that bend don't break mentality 
unfortunately, the offense didn't make enough plays to get it done. It's too many times that the Ravens are taking a game off yep. against teams yep. they should beat. Joe Flacco said that today when he was asked about it. Buffalo Bills were a team they should have found a way to beat. Maybe it's a close game on the road. Maybe it's not the blowout that everyone would have liked. But it's a team you find a way to beat. And quite frankly, the New England Patriots, who have uh, stomped on the Bills really since Marv Levy retired, uh, they find a way to win those games. And the Ravens, if they're going to get back to the Super Bowl, need to find a way that, to win those games. That's a great games. point. Yeah. Well, and we, we talked two years ago. If they beat Jacksonville on the road, that AFC Championship game is in Baltimore, not New England. And maybe it doesn't come down to a Lee Evans swipe catch that cost us going to the Super Bowl. Yes, we rebounded, but we didn't know that at the time. So it's an excellent point. And it's an AFC game, too. Much the same as Miami's an AFC t game coming up. So you want to get those AFC wins. Not that you want to ever lose, but better to lose to an NFC team well, than an AFC team. Well, Mike, if the Ravens are going to make the playoffs, they're probably going to have to go through Denver and New England again. It's just yeah. a fact of life. Because yeah, we're looking you at look it. at the way the divisions are set up and, and the way the two teams are playing right now, and, you know, you got to take your hats off to the New England Patriots because Tom Brady, he's got all new receivers. He's, he's faced with a, a lot of challenges up there with some injuries, and they're finding ways to win. For them to go into Atlanta, we talk about how hard it is to win on the road. They go into Atlanta, and they beat the Falcons, and the Falcons are one of the better teams in the NFC. Yeah. I mean, that was the one silver lining is the fact that Cleveland beat Cincinnati. So, I mean, you still are tied for first place in the division, so you didn't take, you know, too big of a step back on anyone. Just a little glass half full here. Torrey Smith again delivering, stepping up. Five catches, 166 yards, and a touchdown. Deontay Thompson, before he was knocked out with a concussion, he got some snaps. I was a little surprised by that. Thought he might just be a special teams guy uh, on kick return. Four catches, 50 yards. He had a 33-yard catch before he got knocked out by Jimmy Leonard. But he's an outside vertical threat that is getting involved in the offense. He had some catches, four catches out of five targets. Um, you know, Doss not as good, but he did have four catches. Marlon Brown had uh, a touchdown catch. He also had a big first down catch early in the game. So we're seeing receivers capable of making plays here. And it's just a point, or, you know, once we get the running game going and eliminate the penalties, I think we're at least we've got some guys we can work with here. I think there's enough to put together that we can have a semblance of a passing game, but we got to eliminate the other issues. But that run issue, the run game is a big issue, and we'll see if we can we can overcome that or not. But I do want to talk about the defense uh, in the next segment. We'll not have enough time, but I'll let you guys quickly comment about I, the receivers. I'll comment yeah. quickly on that. You look at the Broncos, who I think are far and away the best team in the league right now. They've got the receivers going on. Peyton Manning has them running like a well-oiled machine. And uh, your point about t uh, Tom Brady, I mean, uh, the Patriots really have always had that going on, and Brady just finds ways to win. Now, having said that, he plays statistically worse against the Ravens than any other NFL team. So that's a, a silver lining. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And they have a run game, you know, so that's that's helped them out. About 30 seconds. Go ahead. I, I look at it as a positive. I see guys like Deontay Thompson coming back and Marlon Brown and, you know, the league doesn't have a scouting report on this. I see us being able to sneak up as our receivers become more healthy towards the end of the year. Well, let's uh, let's certainly hope that uh, you know there's a long way between now and then. So, more of the Ravens Rap Show to come on Comcast Beach TV and Delmarva's Rock Radio 93.5 The Beach. about we're giving rich the nfl experience of a goal line dive really <laughs> there's an easier way to get an ultimate nfl fan experience just snap the tag wherever bud light is sold and you could win bud light the nfl here we go can i make it on the internet yes into the end zone no